Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Cowan and today I'm going to chat about canine and feline advanced x-ray techniques. A brief overview on why dental radiography is important. We cannot visualise the root and surrounding bone without it. The vast majority of dental pathology is completely hidden from view and we need to plan the treatment to the individual patient. For example, if resorption is taking place, we should have a very different approach to that extraction. It also increases acceptance of treatment recommendations. It gives the vets the opportunity to discuss any findings with their colleagues and also to show clients the images of their pet's mouths. It provides a legal protection needed in the case of any complications. Anatomical anomalies. Any teeth with additional roots, fused roots, and even supernumerary teeth all need to be imaged. It is strongly advisable to be doing full mouth x-rays on every patient, but even more so with cats. X-rays can be done quickly following our routine six x-ray positioning regime. Our set angle positioners assist with achieving interpretal x-rays without thinking about challenging bisecting angles. Please go to IM3 Direct on YouTube where you can watch our step-by-step -step guide on achieving full mouth x-rays in as little as six views. Advanced positioning techniques for the mandibular teeth. This view can replace your mandibular bisecting angle view so you'll still only be using six views for full mouth x-rays. Sometimes it is difficult to achieve getting the caudal molars in your views, depending on the breed and skull shape of your patient. Shown here is the lateral parallel technique. This technique may give you a better view and some find it easier and quicker when taking views in the mandible. Making use of the soft tissue space and the ease of placing the plate directly behind the teeth. Please do take care, though, not to open the patient's mouth too wide. The bite guard is not required for this technique, but the plate is thinner and more flexible, but still use a light protective sheath. For the purpose of training in this photo on the slide, it has been shown out of the sheath. All you are doing is simply placing the plate in the mouth, behind the teeth in the lower jaw, and aiming the beam at 90 degrees, so perpendicular to the image plate. The size 2 plate is used in the photo here. The advanced positioning technique for the maxillary premolars and molar using our new R3 Plus plate. This high resolution rabbit specific image plate works well in some of our feline patients especially when we're having difficulty obtaining an image of the maxillary caudal premolar and molar. Due to the length and slimness of the R3 plus plate, it can be positioned further into the patient's mouth, providing a full image of the upper left or right maxillary quadrant. Insert the R3 image plate into your patient's mouth, again with no bite guard, at a slight angle as shown in this photo. The dashed line is showing the angle or tilt you want to achieve. You may need to use padding material here again to achieve this tilt on your plate. Most often you can rest the plate against the ET tube in your patient's mouth. The tube head is then angled perpendicular to the plate as shown above. You can see here the x-rays you'll get from this technique. This is the oblique technique used for the maxillary canines. This view prevents the superimposition of the apex of the maxillary canines with the first and second maxillary premolars. When using the 55 degree bisecting angle on the rostral view, as seen in our positioning poster, there is superimposition of the premolars over the canine roots in some of our breeds. In this case, you'll need to adapt the oblique technique on the maxillary canines. We place the 70 degree angle positioner in the corner of the plate, retrospective to the canine tooth you want to see. 
Place the plate flat in the patient's mouth, ensuring the image plate is to the very edge of the crown of the canine you are imaging. We then aim your beam down the steeper angle guide. This helps to create an image whereby the canine tooth has been pushed into the centre of the image plate, allowing you to see all of the root and ligament space without any superimposition of any other teeth in the mouth. The extra oral near parallel technique can be used as an alternative to using the intraoral 30 degree bisecting angle to x-ray the maxillary premolars and molars in our feline patients, especially where the zygomatic arch causes a problem. The zygomatic arch can superimpose the maxillary third and fourth premolars, and this extra oral near parallel technique will produce a clearer image to allow easier interpretation. Use a size 2 plate in the light protection sheath. Again, no need to use a a bite guard. The plate needs to be placed on the table extra orally, so outside of the patient's mouth. Place the patient on the image plate in lateral recumbency with the teeth to be imaged nearest the table. The long axis of the target teeth should be as parallel as possible to the table. The beam then needs to be aimed at 80 degrees to the film and the teeth to be imaged. So this is almost perpendicular to both. The image will be most accurate when the teeth are as near, near parallel as possible to the film. Use one of our small springless mouth gags to keep the patient's mouth safely open. This will allow the beam to be directed onto the film without superimposing the maxillary cheek teeth onto the mandibular cheek teeth. The slob rule is used to separate the two mesial roots on the fourth premolar, as when we image this tooth using a standard bisecting angle, the two mesial roots will appear superimposed. If we move the tube head in a more caudal or rostral direction, this will separate out the mesial roots. However, the standard 45 degree bisecting angle still remains the same. The tube head only needs to be rotated approximately 30 degrees rostrally or caudally in the horizontal plane. So that we can then identify the tooth roots that have been shifted apart, we use the slob rule. The root that moves in the same direction as the beam is the lingual or palatal root as we know it. The root that moves in the opposite direction to the beam is the buccal root. When the tube head is shifted in a rostral direction, pointing towards the back of the head, the distal root of the fourth premolar is often superimposed over the first molar. You can see this on the image below. The orange arrow points to the distal root, the yellow to the buccal root, and the blue arrow is pointing to the palatal root. When the tube head is shifted caudally, so towards the nose, the distal root is well visualised away from the first molar. The red root is the distal, the blue is the palatal, and the yellow is the buccal tooth root. The lateral parallel technique for the mandibular teeth in the canine is very similar to the feline. This can be used as an additional image to the bisecting angle technique for the mandibular molars. Occasionally, it may be necessary to separately image the caudal mandibular molars using a lateral parallel technique and a size 2 plate, especially in our dolichocephalic breeds. Again, the bite guard is not required for this view. With the patient in lateral or dorsal recumbency, with the teeth to be imaged facing up, use a size 2 plate in a protective sheath. Place the plate parallel to the teeth and tooth roots to be imaged on the lingual surface of the mandibular teeth. Then we need to aim the tube head perpendicular to the plate and the teeth. 
Unfortunately, any maxillary teeth cannot be imaged in this plane due to the arched palate or any rostral mandibular teeth due to the mandibular synthesis. Here are the ordering codes for the items mentioned in this presentation. If you require any further assistance or have specific questions relating to our dental radiography equipment, please do not hesitate to get in touch and one of our IM3 colleagues will be happy to help. Thank you very much for listening.